Suvis Daf's Tes Vav Mishnah. Yossi stated the opinion of Rabbi Yochanan ben Nuri concerning a young girl who was violated by an unknown man at a town spring. He held as long as the majority of men of that town are Kesherim, she can marry into the Kuna. The Gemara assumes he follows the opinion of Rabbi Gamliel or Rabbi Yoshua. Question. Rabbi wonders how this can be. He cannot follow Rabbi Gamliel. A previous Mishnah stated he holds that she is believed even in a place of broke Tulin because of Rechesus Kashrus with a Tainus Bari. He also cannot hold like Rabbi Yoshua who disqualifies her even in a place of broke Kesherim. The answer. Rav explained that the girl was violated by the wagons of Tzipori on a market day. This created an additional rove. Not only wore the men of her town kosher, but the visiting merchants were kosher as well. Reb Yeshua permits a woman to marry a coin with two robes without a tiny bury. However, if it is known that she was violated by a local, even on a market day, her child is a shtuki because the additional majority is of no consequence. Question, what is the benefit of a second majority? The answer... Both majorities have a weakness. If the rapist was known to be from the te- that town, the rule of Kavua and that rove applies. It states that when an unknown entity is in its place, even a majority is viewed as Merza Merza, a case of suffix that prohibits her to marry a Kohen. If, on the other hand, the rapist was a visitor because he is not Kavua, a majority prevails, the rule being called the Parish, Miruba Parish. Since the majority of vis- visitors work Sherim, the rapist was considered kosher permitting her to marry a Kohen. However, reliance on such a majority would mistakenly, mistakenly lead to a reliance on a majority in the town. To avoid this, Rabbi Yeshua permitted her to marry a Kohen only with two majorities. Question. The rule of Hochin Acharov does not only apply to visitors. It can apply to one living locally so long as the rapist left his house to cohabit with the girl. He is no longer Kavua. Why was the second majority necessary? The answer. Since it happens also that the girl goes to where he is Kavua, where the circumstances are unknown, the law is not to rely on the majority, but to treat it as a case of Kavua. Therefore, according to Rabbi Yeshua, she is not believed without a second row. Question. Rabbi Yeshua's rule of two majorities is contradicted by a brisa that discusses a case of a place with nine kosher, kosher butcher shops and one non-kosher, distinguishing between one who purchased meat in one of the butcher shops uncertain whether it was kosher or treif, and a piece of meat found in the street. The purchased meat being kavua is treated as, treated as a suffix, even though most of the shops are kosher, whereas the meat found in the street is kosher because it's called the parish maruba parish. It does not matter if the gates of the city are open, visiting merchants are closed. Apparently, one majority suffices. Answer, Rev. Yeshua requires two majorities only to permit a woman to marry a kohen, malo asu biusin, whereas stam isu veheter, one majority suffices. Rabbi Zeri states that the rule of kol kavua kamech samech dummy is a Torah principle and applies stringently or leniently. The proof is from a case of teisha shuratzim v'tzvardeya echot. Nine dead shuratzim and one frog lying together. One was uncertain if he touched a sheretz that contaminates or a frog that doesn't contaminate. The Torah decides by their location, suffik tumah b'shus hayochi tami, b'shus harabim tohar. They are found together in a public domain, Tahar, a private domain, Tame. The majority of Shratzim in the public domain does not decide the outcome because they are Kavua. And he remains Tahar, a leniency. The Gemara brings a verse to prove that the rule of Kol Kavua Kamech Samech Sedami applies even if it results in a leniency. Or it states, Varav Lo Bekama Love. One to be liable for murder, he must ambush and rise up against him, his victim, excluding one who killed a Jew by throwing a rock into a group of Jews and Canaanites for who a Jewish court would not prosecute. If the Canaanites were the majority or even 50% of the crowd, a verse would not be necessary to exempt them because the Torah states in another verse, the teaching when in doubt, do not prosecute. Therefore, the verse exempts him even when the Canaanites are the minority because of Kavua. There is a dispute whether our mission is Da'alacha. Reb Barashi, in the name of Rav holds he is permitted to a Kohen, Rav Hanan, in the name of Rav Holds, it was a Hirosha decision only then. Question. How could only one, how could one majority be the Aloha? Mishnah Machshirin discusses the status of an abandoned child. It states that if most of the locale is Gentile, he is assumed to be a Gentile, mostly Jewish, he is assumed to be Jewish. 50-50, the Jewish community must support him, but if a girl was abandoned, even if she converts, she cannot marry a Kohen. This proves that two majorities are needed to permit her to a Kohen. Answer. When Rabbi Yirmiel presented his challenge, he forgot that Rab's explanation 
that she was violated on a market day. However, Rav Hanan, who explained the mission as a Hirasha, it is understood Kipshuto. She was definitely violated by one of that locale. Mu holds that even if the abandoned child was found in a locale, mostly Gentiles, and trapped under a building, the rubble can be cleared on Shabbos to save the child's life. The verse states to live by them dictates even if there is a slight chance, chance the endangered person is a Jew, every effort must be made to save his life, but he does not have to be fed kosher food. If mostly Jewish, one, can, one must return his lost object. 50-50, he pays half damages for a time until the victim proves he is a Gentile.